In the old days, wooden barrels stored all manner of goods for the simple reason that they were easy to move. If you couldn't lift them, you could roll them. Today, modern machinery has made barrels obsolete, except for storing fine wine and spirits. And so the time-honored tradition of barrel making lives on. These wooden barrels are for storing whiskey. They're made from American white oak cut into pieces called staves. The staves go into a planer that shaves them to about 2.5 centimeters thick. Next, a machine punches two 6 millimeter holes on either side of each stave. Dowel pins made out of hickory, a very strong wood, go into these holes to hold the staves together. They take the staves, place them on a guide, and press them together. A smaller piece completes the shape. Now it's onto the rounder, a machine that cuts it into a circular shape. This creates the barrel's lid, or head as it's called. And since two heads are better than one, each barrel has a pair. The barrel head now goes onto a contraption called the char tunnel. Its gas burners scorch the wood. This charring not only changes how the natural wood looks, it also gives color, flavor, and aroma to the whiskey the barrel will hold. They coat the head's edges with liquid beeswax, which helps them set it snugly into the barrel body. They run the stays against this machine to narrow their ends. This gives the barrel its characteristic shape with a smaller radius at the ends than in the middle. At the barrel raising station, a worker positions an iron hoop and starts to assemble the barrel inside it. He selects staves that vary in width in order to use as few as possible. This reduces the number of joints and potential leak points. He gently lassos the barrel together. If he pulls that dry wood too tight, it'll break into pieces. A loose hoop gives the wood room to expand. The barrels pass through a steam tunnel for about 15 minutes, adding moisture to the wood so it can flex without snapping. Workers pull out the barrel and remove the top and bottom hoops. They replace them with sturdier ones and hammer them in. Without these hoops, the barrel would spring apart like a jack-in-the-box. Next, two more hoops around the body. The wood groans from the intense pressure that forces the staves together. But there can't be any gaps between the staves or else the barrel will leak. The barrels pass over a gas burner that blasts a flame inside each one to char its interior. Seconds later, water shoots into the barrel to put out the flames. An automated saw cuts a V-shaped notch into the top and bottom of each barrel. This is where the barrel head will slot in. A fan blows away the sawdust. Now a machine removes the iron hoop on each end. A worker pours in a gallon of water to cool the barrel, still hot from the charring process. Then he puts on a barrel head and a stronger, permanent iron hoop on both ends. Now machines remove the two iron body hoops and replace them as well with stronger ones. These barrels hold their shape by sheer pressure. There's not a drop of glue used to hold them together. That gallon of water is still inside the barrel. Workers drill a hole in the side, then plug it by hammering in a rubber stopper with a spout. An inspector checks the barrels for leaks, stamps it approved, and labels it with a barcode for inventory. Then they remove the stopper. The water, turned to steam because of the heat, shoots out. The barrels are now ready to go on to the distillery, where they'll get their fill of some fine Kentucky whiskey.